The vast distances at which objects are located is one of the most significant obstacles to space travel. Even within the solar system, the distance between planets is so great that traveling from one to another would take several years or even decades, whereas traveling to the nearest stars would require centuries or even thousands of years. Cryogenic sleep or induced hibernation is a potential solution to this problem, as humans cannot undertake such a lengthy voyage due to our short lifespans. This is a method by which we could place astronauts into an artificial coma, placing them in capsules or chambers in which they would sleep for decades or even centuries before awakening when they reached their destination. How feasible is this for contemporary science? Is cryogenic slumber available for space travel? Let's find out. NASA estimates that using current technology, it would take approximately seven months to reach Mars, which is 480 million kilometers from Earth along its orbit. A spacecraft would require approximately eight years to reach Jupiter and 12 years to reach Pluto. If you have ever been bored on a long-distance flight, consider spending years inside a small spaceship waiting to reach your destination. It would be unbelievably dull, right? How long would the journey between galaxies take? How long would it take us to reach the Andromeda Galaxy, the nearest large spiral galaxy? The required distance is 2,537 million light years, or approximately 22,831 billion kilometers. When compared to the seven months required to disembark on Mars, this number indicates that it would take approximately 28 million years to reach the Andromeda Galaxy. This number is approximate, but it gives us a notion of how long intergalactic travel would take. How can we solve this issue, given that no human can live that long and our consciousness cannot be transferred to another biological or artificial body? Numerous science fiction films, such as 2001, A Space Odyssey, Interstellar, and Passengers, have already demonstrated one viable option, induced cryogenic slumber or suspended animation. Cryogenic sleep necessitates low temperatures, whereas suspended animation is typically attained with only a few degrees of temperature reduction. However, the terms are frequently used interchangeably in popular media. Cryogenic slumber. Cryogenic slumber is a type of artificially induced hibernation in humans. Various animals in the wild can reduce their metabolism by lowering their body temperature. In this state of biostasis, they can survive without sustenance or water for months. For instance, marmots can hibernate for eight months in a state known as torpor, during which their heart rate, metabolism, and body temperature are reduced. After these months, their bodies reheat up and they come back to life unharmed. Although humans cannot naturally choose to hibernate, medical technology may be able to induce this condition. Several scientists are presently investigating how to induce something resembling cryosleep in humans. This could aid in the medicinal treatment of conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, and Alzheimer's. No technology can realistically send a person into induced hibernation indefinitely. The closest equivalent is an induced coma, but a coma is not identical to a cryogenic slumber state. The primary distinction is that a person in a coma is completely unconscious and cannot sense his surroundings. Simultaneously, their body continues to age at a normal rate, while their metabolism functions normally and they require sustenance to avoid dehydration or malnutrition. In contrast, during cryogenic sleep, the individual enters a dream state, which is distinct from a coma, in addition to their metabolism slowing or nearly halting, which slows the body's functions and halts cell aging until they awaken. The aging process then resumes once your metabolism and vital signs return to normal. Currently, no technology is capable of achieving this, but significant efforts are being made to do so. Cryopreservation of organs for transplantation is one example. Organs are cooled to low temperatures in a cryoprotective liquid to prevent the formation of ice crystals and other forms of injury. Organs can be frozen for extended periods of time and then thawed for transplantation. 
This method has been successful for specific organs, including the liver and kidneys. The cryopreservation of human embryos and ovarian tissue is another example. Liquid nitrogen is used to chill embryos and tissue to low temperatures for long-term storage. Embryo cryopreservation is a prevalent assisted fertility technique that has been used to preserve embryos for future use in reproduction. Cryopreservation of ovarian tissue is used to preserve fertility in women who have undergone cancer treatment, and it may be essential for protecting female astronauts' fertility during protracted space travel. Illustrations of Cryogenic Preservation Some companies are dedicated to preserving frozen human corpses in the hopes of reviving them in the future, which may sound unbelievable. These companies preserve the bodies of individuals who, during their lifetimes, suffered from a terminal illness and voluntarily determined that their bodies should be preserved in the hope that one day, a cure for their diseases will be discovered. Alcor Life Extension Foundation is devoted to the cryopreservation of entire human bodies and minds in liquid nitrogen at 196 degrees Celsius. Before immersing the body in liquid nitrogen, the technique consists of replacing physiological fluids with a cryoprotective solution. The objective is to minimize potential injury so that the body or brain can be revived. The Alcor Life Extension Foundation employs a vitrification method known as whole brain, which involves removing and substituting the blood with a cryoprotective solution. This solution prevents the formation of ice crystals, which can cause irreparable cellular injury in the brain tissues. The body or brain is deposited in a tank of liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees Celsius. The Russian enterprise Kriorus is also committed to the cryopreservation of human bodies and brains. Kriorus use a similar technique. Since its founding in 2005, Kriorus has cryopreserved more than 80 individuals and established international agreements for transporting and storing bodies in other countries. Kriorus is also involved in the research and development of technologies that enhance the efficacy and practicability of cryopreservation. Advantages and Disadvantages Let's begin with the benefits. Astronauts could travel for months or years without noticing the passage of time. When you spend so much time interacting with other individuals in a confined space, your mental health is at risk. This would also reduce their input needs, as they would require less sustenance and water if they slept the majority of the time. If a spacecraft carried less cargo, it would utilize less fuel. Additionally, cryosleep chambers could safeguard astronauts from harmful cosmic radiation more effectively. On Earth, we are protected by our planet's atmosphere and magnetic shield. However, astronauts are exposed to radiation in space. In contrast to cryopreservation, cryosleep can be reversed relatively easily by restoring the astronaut to their normal body temperature without harming the body. The most apparent disadvantage is the fact that this technology does not yet exist. Second, hibernation does not halt aging completely. With sophisticated technology, aging could be significantly slowed down, possibly for centuries. Nevertheless, cryosleep alone will not enable us to travel to the Andromeda galaxy. We could hibernate for decades or centuries, but not millions. Are there scientists researching cold slumber for space travel? The answer is affirmative. NASA is collaborating with engineers and scientists from the aerospace company Space Work Enterprises on a project titled Torpor Inducing Transfer Habitat for Human Stasis on Mars. It pertains to the medical practice of therapeutic hypothermia, TH, which is commonly employed in the treatment of traumatic injuries. By chilling the body to only 5 to 7 degrees Celsius, the metabolic rate is significantly lowered. It decreases between 5 and 7 percent for each degree C decrease in central body temperature. There will be multiple two-week cycles of suspended animation for the astronauts. During this period, they will receive intravenous nutrition and have their excrement removed via catheters. 
SpaceWorks proposes the design of a torpor-inducing Mars transfer habitat and an architectural level assessment to completely characterize the impact on Mars exploration. If this project is sustained in the future, the technology could develop to make this proposal a reality. Die to be resurrected. Numerous scientists have analyzed the various options for very lengthy journeys, and the possibility of reviving corpses in space has been brought up multiple times. Yes, there are indeed carcasses. This is the cryopreservation about which we just spoke. If we develop the technology to revive corpses that have been frozen for years in the future, this could be the answer to long-term travel. In science fiction, cryopreservation is a reliable and effective technique that allows astronauts to travel for extended periods of time in space without experiencing the effects of aging. Sadly, we still lack this form of technology in the real world. Given what is currently being developed for cryogenic hibernation, the application of this technology to spaceflight may not be that distant. Space travel poses many difficulties. For some of them, we have not yet discovered a solution. Nevertheless, when the available technology was in its infancy, even sailing presented numerous challenges. The development of space travel technology only began a little more than half a century ago. We are just beginning to investigate the first obstacles on this long road ahead. Cryogenic sleep for space travel raises fundamental ethical and philosophical concerns about the nature of life and death and the meaning of human existence, in addition to its scientific limitations. Nevertheless, despite these complexities, it remains an inspiring and intriguing topic, inviting us to imagine the future and dream of a world in which human existence can be preserved beyond present limitations. And it is a bold and exciting concept that inspires scientists, researchers, and dreamers around the globe to work together to reach new limits and lay the groundwork for future space travel.